Hey everybody, welcome to week five of the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks. I'm Matthew from My First Fish Tank, working in collaboration with Marine Depot. If you missed episodes one, two, three, or four, I will put a link up here to the entire playlist and a link in the description below. This week, we're going to discuss all of the essential equipment for a saltwater aquarium. But be sure not to miss next week, where we talk about all of the optional or situational equipment. So if during your research for building a saltwater aquarium, you've ever asked this question, do I need this? Stick around, we're gonna jump right in and give you the answer. Category one, the basic necessities. The first thing you're obviously gonna need is a tank. We're not gonna talk about tanks, but if you check out episode three and episode four, we talk all about tanks and stands. The second basic necessity for your tank is some sort of light. These range a lot from the style they are, from the type of lighting to their price point. And what you're going to buy depends on what you're gonna need it for. For example, if you're gonna just get a fish only tank, you really don't need anything fancy. But if you're gonna go high end, small polyp stony corals or anemones, then you're gonna need to consider something that has a wider spectrum and puts out more par. So do you need a light? Yeah, you're gonna need a light for a salt water tank, but you don't need to go with the most fancy high end light. In later videos, we're gonna break down all the different kinds of lights out there, their price points and what you're gonna need. But one of the essential equipment things that you're gonna need are lights. The third basic necessity is water. You really need water for two things. One, you need water for salt, so you need salt water, and then you need fresh water because every single day your tank is going to evaporate, which makes the tank saltier and saltier, so you're going to have to replace that evaporated water. You really have two ways of going about this. If you live in any major city, you probably have a local fish store near you that sells you both fresh water that's been heavily filtered. We usually call it RODI water, and they'll also sell you salt water. So a lot of beginners go this route, and they just go to their local fish store every week and pick up what they need. You can also go to the grocery store and purchase distilled water. Distilled water works really great. It's a little bit of an expensive option and you have to lug those gallon jugs back and forth. The last option is to make it yourself at home. You'll need to purchase an RODI filter, but once you get the hang of it, you're gonna save money long run because that RODI water is going to be super pure, and then you just need to buy an appropriate salt mix to mix the salt water yourself at home. The fifth and final basic necessity is some sort of a return pump. Here's just a couple examples of return pumps. This is a more inexpensive AC pump. This is a controllable DC pump. If you buy an all-in-one system, and one of the systems we're gonna talk about later, it will come with a return pump. And all a return pump does is it returns the water from your filtration back to the display tank. And it really is what powers your filtration. Whether or not you go with a more inexpensive AC pump or something that's a little bit more expensive in a DC pump, we'll discuss at greater length, but just know you will need some sort of return pump. Essential equipment category number two, really anything related to filtration. The first piece of filtration is some sort of mechanical filtration. You have chemical filtration, biological filtration, and mechanical filtration. And at a bare minimum, every tank needs some sort of mechanical filtration. And for mechanical filtration, we're talking about either a filter sock, some sort of polyester filter floss, filter fiber, or some sort of sponge. You can get a lot fancier, but the essential element is definitely gonna be some sort of mechanical filtration. The second piece of essential equipment in the filtration support category, and some people will, will disagree with me here, rocks, live rock. Technically, can you build a saltwater aquarium without live rock? Yes, but for every tank we're going to recommend, we are going to recommend using live rock because live rock is going to form the basis of your biological filtration. So yes, you could do a fish only tank. Yes, you could stock only ceramic media plates or ceramic balls. Yes, you could use some sort of plastic bio balls as well. But what we're gonna recommend is some sort of live rock. It comes in different shapes, different colors, different styles. Some of it's human made, some of it's pulled from a quarry, some of it's pulled from, from the ocean. It's going to provide a home for beneficial bacteria to colonize to help keep your water parameters stable. It's also gonna provide a place Place to put your corals and it's also going to provide habitat and hiding places for your fish. And the third piece of essential equipment in the filtration support category is a basic test kit. 
I have a whole shelf of test kits, no joke. I have I don't know, 50 different test kits out there, but at a bare minimum, you need something that's gonna test for your nitrogen cycle, something that's gonna test for your ammonia, for your nitrite, and for your nitrate. And as you grow in this hobby, as you add corals, and as you add more invertebrates, you will also need to test for calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity as well. But if you're gonna pick up one basic test kit, get this saltwater master test kit from API. It's affordable. I'd say 90% of beginners use it, and it works just fine. The third category of essential equipment is maintenance and everything else we couldn't put into the other categories. First up is a refractometer or something to measure your salinity with. Absolutely essential. There are different ways to do this. You could get a hydrometer, but they're just not as accurate. When for $20 to $50, you can pick up this piece of equipment. I've had this for five years. This is a refractometer and it will give you an accurate reading of the salinity. If you wanna go a little bit fancier, Hanna Instruments and other companies as well make these digital probes, but these you have to calibrate frequently. So if I was to recommend one thing for testing your salt water, it would be a refractometer. The second essential piece of equipment is going to be a mesh screen. I'm gonna call it essential. Yes, you could go with some sort of glass canopy, but we typically don't do those much in the salt water hobby anymore. Some people really like a clean look and they don't wanna put a mesh screen on. And that could work if you have fish that you know don't jump. But you will be surprised at how many different fish will take that dive and you'll find them dry and dead on the floor. So do yourself a favor, if yours doesn't come with a mesh screen, then make one yourself or have something custom made for you. It will protect your fish. The third piece of maintenance essential equipment you're gonna need is an algae scraper. And I'd actually recommend getting two algae scrapers. You have your basic mechanical handheld algae scrapers. They come different shapes, different sizes, but you also have magnetic algae scrapers. And I would really recommend both because on a daily basis or a couple times a week, you're gonna wanna use a magnetic algae scraper to clean the inside of your tank. But sometimes there will be places where your magnetic scraper just won't get, and that's when you're gonna want a handheld algae scraper. Next up are fish nets. They are so inexpensive, different shapes, different sizes. Do yourself a favor, buy several of different sizes. Even if you don't plan on using fish nets, you plan on using a gloved hand or some sort of container, you'll be surprised at how often these come in handy. The fifth essential maintenance item you're gonna need is you're gonna need some sort of food, fish food, coral food, whatever. There's frozen food, there's dry food, you can get food in pellets, this is coral food, flaked food, algae strips, at a bare minimum, you're gonna want some sort of pellet or some sort of flake as a backup. As you get into the hobby, different fish will have different diets. So you just wanna make sure you have enough of the right kind of food always in your house. The sixth thing you're gonna need for maintenance is what I call a gravel vac. I think they're called a gravel vac. Basically, this is handy for a couple different things. One, it helps keep your substrate clean because you can just kind of pinch this line and suck out little bits of detritus. It also just helps you with general water changes. And this is what I use several times a week to do water changes on all my tanks. They come in small sizes, mini sizes, and large sizes. So just choose the size that's right for you. And maybe pick up a couple different sizes because they come in super handy. And the final piece of essential equipment you're gonna need, buckets. Don't shortchange yourself here, get buckets of different sizes because you are going to use these for all sorts of things and get more buckets than you think you'll need because they're so inexpensive and they're so useful in this hobby. Just make sure that whatever buckets you use, you only use them for your saltwater aquariums and not for any other purpose in the house. That's it, short and sweet this week. If you watch that entire video and you're still like, hey, but what about this piece of equipment or what about that piece of equipment? Tune in next week. I'm sure we're going to talk about it. If you found this video helpful in any way, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to Marine Depot and to my first fish tank. And as always, happy reefing, be well. We'll see you next week, everybody.